Matter of fact, uh, as I made mention to the fact that we, you know, earlier this week, we talked about fix your thinking and we went on from fixing your thinking to yesterday we spoke about, think about what you're thinking about. And I think it's so very important that you understand that as a man think of in his heart, so was he, so was, so was she. But, 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 but your thinking will eventually lead to what you're speaking. And we want to be able now to, to, to make sure that we're, we're, we're speaking those things that will bring life, that will speak life over us, speak life over you, speak life over your family, speak life over your children, speak life over your finances, speak life over your future. We have to be able to see the power of the tongue. I'm going to say that again. The power of the tongue. That's my theme for today. You see, and, and, and the question today is this. Are you really paying attention to the words that is coming out of your mouth? You know, because sometimes we just, just talking, just rattling off stuff and really not paying attention to the to the kind of words, and I'm not even talking about curse words. That that shouldn't even be in our mouths. But what I'm talking about is those discouraging words. I'm talking about those words of anger. I'm talking about those words of, of, of unforget. I'm, I just can't forgive that somebody. We have to be able to pay attention to the words that is coming out of our mouth. And you know, and you know, and, and 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 so easily, you know, we we can say things that can really set us back, and not realize that you know we have handicapped, we have crippled ourselves. Why? Because of the words that is coming out of our mouths. Why? Because we don't realize the power of the tongue. Matter of fact, my opening verse of scripture is coming out of Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Death in life is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it shall eat the fruit of it. Fruit of it. Good fruit, bad fruit. Depending upon the words that is coming out of your mouth. And this verse applies to all of us. Are you hearing me? All of us. All of us. Whether in the body of Christ, out of the body of Christ. These words, this verse of scripture here applies to all of us. You can't get around it. You have to be able to see the importance of, 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 of selecting words that will build you up and not tear you down. Thank you, Jesus. See, see, because, because your words, when you know, you have to realize now, your words are. are when you're speaking these words, whatever words you're speaking, really what you're doing is you're sowing. You're sowing. And let me say something now, because the Bible says in, in Galatians 6 and 7, for as a man sow, so shall you reap. But you know something? You know, and really when you say that, as a man, as a woman sow, so shall you reap. If I, if I sow an apple seed, I'm going to get apples. But really when you think about it now, Really think about this. Whatever you sow, you don't just, if I sow one seed, I'm not just going to get one apple. I'm going to get a bunch of apples. I'm going to get an apple tree that's going to that's gonna bring forth, you know, bushels of apples, pears, oranges. Whatever it is you sow, it's going to come back multiplied and increased. And this is why it is so very important that you pay attention to the words that you're sowing. Because if you're sowing a little bit, oh, it's just a little bit of bad word, of a bad word. See, but that little bit of a bad word will grow and mushroom into a whole lot of mess. Are you hearing me? We have to pay attention because you will always reap what you sow. It, why? Because understand now, that's an immutable law. It, it's the law of cause and effect that cannot be changed. This law, this immutable law of cause and effect cannot be changed. 
as a man, as a woman, so, so shall you reap and you will always get more back than what you sold. So this is why you want to be able to speak those things that are good, those things that are of a good report. I, I need some goodness. I need some. I need something that's going to bless me to come back. Are you hearing me? I don't. I don't want to hear that something that's going to tear a good man, good woman down. See, and we are in other people's lives to help support, to help encourage. That's why you you show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. And I'm thanking God for this prayer line. I'm thanking God for this YouTube channel. I'm thanking God for the work that he has called me to, the assignment that he's given to me. It's a blessing to me. And I recognize and realize that if I wasn't doing this, oh God, I, I, don't, even, I don't even want to think about where I would be. See, you have to be able to discover yourself in God. You have to be able to not just create a life because many of us are trying to create a life for ourselves without following God's blueprint. Oh, man, oh, man. Are, are you hearing me today? You have to speak ooh, life over yourself because every time you speak, you are sowing either good or something bad, something good or something bad. So you want to make sure Mm, mm, mm. You are thinking on those things that are good. You want to make sure that you're thinking about what you're thinking about. You want to make sure that you're not misusing the words. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, that is, you know, that can come out of your mouth. You know, matter of fact, Paul says some things. Uh, greater is he that is in you. Matter of fact, you are more than a conqueror. Uh, uh, you can do all things through Christ, but many of us have the can't do. I can't do. I can't be. And 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 you just don't see yourself going to you know making it or going to a better place mainly because of the words that you're speaking out of your mouth. So I would dare say it's time to pay attention to the words that you're speaking, because the words that you're speaking have the power to strengthen you or to weaken you? Are you hearing me today? <laughs> Some of us are at a bad place. Woke up this morning, had a little pain in my body, and man, I, I'm not going to work or I, I just don't feel like getting up. Hey, and I'm going to tell you now, whew, we have to be disciplined. We, you have to be disciplined. I, hey, look here, there's, there's mornings when I get up and and my body just, I, I just don't feel like working out. I mean, I, I just don't feel like doing what I know I need to do in order to, 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 to feel good about myself, to, to, to make this day work for me. I, I have to be disciplined. I have to be able to do something. Motion is lotion. I have to be able to move this body. I just can't lay in my bed. Are you hearing me? See, and some of us, we have submitted and surrendered to the comfort of our beds and our chairs and our television sets and our, you know, computers and Facebook and Twitter and all this other stuff that we can get engrossed or enmeshed in and not realize that we're, you know, we're taking away from ourselves because you can't grow yourself. What you're doing is depleting yourself. You're wasting good energy doing things that are not beneficial. Matter of fact, Proverbs, Proverbs 18 and 4 says this. The words of a man's mouth, let me not let me leave, not leave you women out. The words of a of a man, of a woman's mouth are like deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is like a flowing stream. See, you want to use words of wisdom flowing from your mouth. You want the words of wisdom flowing from your mouth. Why? Because your words will either make you or break you. Are you hearing me? Your words, the words that you speak will either make you or break you. You have to be. And you know, that's what's so beautiful about prayer. When I think about that time that I spend talking with the Lord in prayer, 
Man, and I mean, there's times I'll come, Lord, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to get through that. But I find comfort in knowing that as I sit before the Lord, as I continue to talk with him, I know he's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. And God will give you that blessed assurance of knowing that all things are going to work together for the good. Are you hearing me? What are you believing God for? What do you believe in God for? When is the last time you really had a, a little talk with Jesus? Uh, when is the last time you really came before him, emptied yourself of yourself, and moved past all the facade and all of these things that we, you know, we 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 think we need to do or think in order to, to approach him? Hey, just come to Jesus. The Bible says if you can come like a little child. Sometimes we just got to drop the facade, drop all this stuff, these titles, and all of these things that can get us so engrossed or enmeshed in stuff that's really not going to be beneficial or helpful to what you want to do or maybe meeting the need that you have in your life. Have a little talk with Jesus. I heard someone say on yesterday, WWJD, what would Jesus do? That's one thing. The Lord loved to talk to his Heavenly Father, Abba Father, He loves, see, and you have to have that kind of relationship with God where you just want to, I just got to talk with you every day. I have to be able to start my day talking to you because when I talk with you, I come away from that talk feeling better. I come away from that. It's, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like getting up out of my bed and, 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 and moving around. Do you know how many people wish they could do what you're able to do? Do you know how many people who are who are who are laid up in the hospital? Not, not just laid up in the hospital, but tied to tubes. Do you know how many people who might see themselves with a death sentence? Why? Because they got HIV or or, or, or they had the COVID. Hey, we lost a lot of people under that COVID. Lord Jesus. I mean, COVID, but not just COVID, look at gun violence. I mean, look at the assassination attempt, even on the former president. I don't even want to call his name, but you understand what I'm talking about? You got to see we're living in a wicked world and this wicked world will cause you to come up with some wicked thoughts because the young man that attempted to assassinate 20, I think he was 20, 21, 20, 20, in his 20s, young man. A whole life to live through it away. Why? Because he allowed evil to override the good that he could have been doing. Oh, uh, man, you, you can't. And then what happened? Because of his attempt on taking someone's life, he lost his life. He lost his life at a young age never to be here no more. And this is why it is so very important that you fix your thinking, think about what you're thinking about, and then understand the power of the tongue, the things that you speak. This is why mm, mm -mm. it is so important that you speak words of life over yourself, especially during those hard and difficult days and times in your life because all of us will confront some stuff that will cause you to wonder or at least doubt are you gonna make it man some of you on the prayer line i mean hey oh you're still dealing with chemo dealing with this dealing with that you know and and there's been seasons and times when you're wondering if what the doctor promised and what the doctor said or what the medication that you're taking, how come it's not doing what the doctor prescribed or, or, or ooh, what the doctor said it would do? I'm taking it according to what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm advised or informed. Take it three times a day with a meal, so on and so forth, or once a day, this, whatever. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm still not getting any better. And that will sometimes cause us to think and speak words that will not build us up, not correct or make your situation better, but keep you in a low and discouraged, unhappy, unhealthy state of mind and being. You want to be able to speak positive words over yourself.
especially during times like that. And when I say times like that, times like this, and, 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 and understand now, you don't want to block God's blessings. See, see, many have blocked God's blessings because they don't know how to speak those words that they need to speak. I'm talking about that word. Oh, God, my Jesus. We have read the word. We know the word. The word has been sown in our hearts. But instead of releasing those words, I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me. I can do all things through Christ. Instead of releasing those words, I can't do. Nobody loves me. Nobody know what I'm going through. Hey, the Bible says, God will never turn his back on you. God, hey, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't you know that you're not in this fight by yourself? But if you speak negative words over yourself, what you do is you open the door for that, ooh, that other spirit to come in and to override the good that God want to do. Are you hearing me? Sometimes we just got to be able to hold on. Sometimes we got to be able to lock in. Lord Jesus, we got to be able to push through whatever it is that's coming up against us to try to stop us, to try to stop you, to try to keep you from going to the next level. My sister, you are amazing. You have one ooh, amazing testimony because if it had not been for the Lord, my God, my God, you fought through, ooh, you fought through the COVID and you are still here. You fought through the cancer, you're still here. You fought through this, you fought through that. My God, you might need a kidney. You might need whatever. I'm here to tell you, I'm talking about the God that is able to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Oh, my God, I love you. You've got to love a God like this. How can you not trust God? How can you not ooh, keep looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith? He's not saying you're not going to deal with a trial. He's not here to say you're not going to be tested. All of us going to be tried. All of us going to be tested. But I'm here to tell you, greater is he that is in you. You are more than a conqueror. You can do this, my sister. You're going to make it, my brother. This is your season, your season for change, your season for elevation. My God, my God, that enemy wants you to think. Your mind is messed up. Wants you to think, my God, my God, nobody loves you. Uh, you it wasn't for the mere fact that you, you, you could rub two sticks together, but you can't get fired. Oh, I don't know now. I don't know about all that now. But I'm here to tell you one thing. Oh, my God, my God, if you just sit before the Lord and trust in the Lord with all of your heart and not allow the world and the dictates of the world to come in, I'm here to tell you, God will bless you. See, I, see, see, God has been known to grant. He, I mean, he has been known not just to grant, but to give you the desires of your heart. See, but you have to be able to speak those words that will contribute to him. Let's just say, open that, opening that door of abundance. He want to bless you real good. I'm talking about the God that is able to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. He want to give you more than what you ask for. Oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, he told David, man, had I not given you enough, yeah, I would have given you more if that's what you wanted, if that's what you needed. Sometimes all we have to do is ask. See, and this is why it is so very important that we just have a little talk with Jesus. Because that little talk with Jesus can make a big difference in your life. Are you hearing me? A little talk with Jesus can make a big difference in your life. Man. Because when you're not talking to Jesus, you're talking to yourself, you're talking to your flesh. When you're talking to your flesh, you're speaking with the devil. Thank you, Jesus. So this is about my God, my God. I know what side my bread is buttered on. I know who made it possible for me to experience another day clothed in my right mind. I, who are you hearing me today? See, 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 all you got to do is bring your concerns. 
your wants, your needs, bring it to God. Bring it to God. Bring it to him first. See, because it's not about you trying to fix your problem. It's not, hey, look here. If you could fix yourself, you would have went to work on yourself a long time ago. But we come to a place in our lives when we realize you know, all of the wells have dried up and there's nowhere else for me to turn. Let me try Jesus. I didn't try Crack Smack. I didn't try uh, Johnny Walker Red. I didn't try him. I didn't try Sister Butterbean. I didn't try Crazy Eddie Slick Willie. I didn't try all kind of stuff and nothing seemed to work. But guess what? Oh, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to try this man named Jesus. That, that, that one who's often imitated but never duplicated him. That one who stands alone. I'm talking about God all by himself. Uh, I'm talking about the lily of the valley. I'm talking about the bright and morning star. I'm talking about the ancient of days. Look at Matthew 12 and 34. Matthew 12 and 34 says, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, because you got to understand now what's in your heart is going to come out your mouth. See, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, a good woman, out of the good treasure of their heart brings forth good things. And an evil man, an evil woman, out of their heart brings forth evil treasure, uh, evil things. Treasures br brings forth evil things, the evil treasures of their heart brings forth evil things. But I say to you, I say to you that for every idle word that a man or a woman may speak, they will give, you will have to give an account for it in the day of judgment. Every idle word, tell me there's no power in the words that we speak. There is power in the tongue. And you want to make sure you're speaking words that will bring forth life. Because look at the 37th verse. For by your words, you will be justified. Lord Jesus. By your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. I mean, that's it. Hey, it's it right there. The power of the tongue. By your words. You will be justified. You will be acceptable to God. The door of heaven, I mean, my God, my God, the favor of God, the blessings of God will be upon your life. But by your word, you will be condemned when you're speaking words that, you know, have no life, words that are evil, words that will not support the man, the woman that God has sent you here to be. Your mouth is a major part of your love walk. I'm going to say it again. Your mouth is going to play a big part in your love walk. Hey, because this is, hey, this is really a, a walk where we have to demonstrate the love of God. S speaking words of love, uh, uh, you know, uh, you don't just want to be a hearer of the word, you have to be a doer of the word. When, when was the last time you took a look at or really paid attention to what's going on in your heart. I mean, what's really going on in your heart? Because as he says now, as, as, as he says now, he says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Matthew 12 and 34. And this is why I can ask you this question this morning. When is the last time you really paid attention to what's in your heart? When it comes to the words, uh, the, the vocabulary, the, 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 the message, what is the message of your heart today? Because Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart is deceitful. Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? As if Jeremiah is telling us that we don't even know really what's in our own heart. Why? Because we're really not giving it the kind of attention that we should be giving it. And this is why we can say things and, and end up doing things that would not be productive or, or conducive to proper growth and development as a man, woman of God. Don't you know you've been anointed, appointed, elected, and selected by God? Oh, my God, I thank you, Lord. 
See, you got to know who you are in him. When you know who you are in Christ, no devil in hell can stop you, cause you to want to wanna quit, make you doubt, make you surrender. Are you hearing me? Matter of fact, look here, look here. The Lord says, I, the Lord, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his, every woman according to her ways, his and her ways, according to the fruit of their doings. We talked earlier about the, the fruit. You know, good fruit, bad fruit going to come out of that mouth. So, so you have to be able to see because the Lord says he searches the heart. You can't hide nothing from God. You can't keep nothing from God. Oh, you can hide it from your pastor. You can hide it from your spouse. You can hide it from your children. You can hide it from the next door neighbor, but you can't hide those things uh, that you're doing, those things that you're carrying in your heart. God knows everything. Nothing is hidden from God. And what does he do? He tests the mind. He tests the mind so he can show you what is in your heart. Because many have learned the language of the Bible, but they're not living or committed to living out ooh, the word that is in the Bible. Are you hearing me? And even to give every man, every woman, according to their ways, according to the fruit, of their doings. See, and this is why you have to be able to listen to yourself. You have to be able to listen to yourself. You know, so many, and we all know somebody, and we might have been like that at one time, where we just run in our mouth and not even thinking about what we're speaking. You know, my mama used to tell me, son, you need to think about, think before you speak. Because I would say some things, and then, you know, it's just like toothpaste. Once that toothpaste come out of the tube, you can't put it back in there. And once those words come out of your mouth, you can't put those words back in your mouth. Are you hearing me? And you might say, I'm sorry. And that somebody might say, okay, I, I forgive you. But they don't forget what you said. Because really what you said is what was in your heart. And what is in your heart, Lord Jesus, be slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to anger. Slow to speak, quick to hear slow to anger. You have to be able to listen to yourself. Listen to yourself when you speak. Why? Because you are accountable for the words that you speak. You are accountable for the words that you speak. The words you speak can either make you or break you. Are you hearing me? See, and you don't want to, hey, look here, look here. We are halfway through this year. And all of us had a new year resolution. All of us wanted to do some things and to accomplish some things. And I don't know where you're at, you know, when it comes to uh, fulfilling those things you said you wanted to do, or when it comes to manifesting those things that you said you want to accomplish and achieve. But the real deal is God wants you to know you still have time to make it happen. You, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you still have time to make it happen. Because you have people leaving the planet young. Oh, Lord, gee, I'm not talking about, hey, look here. I mean, young. I mean, <laughs> who? I'm talking about, oh, Lord, young. And then you have people leaving the planet old. But you do not want to leave the planet full. If I leave here, I want to leave here empty. I want to be able to accomplish and do those things that God has birthed in me, given to me, allowed me to see. In other words, I want to be able to do those things that will that will solidify my reason, or should I say your reason for being. Oh, you're not an accident and you're not a mistake. And you have to be able to see. Hey, matter of fact, Psalm 107 and 20 says, he sent his word and healed them. Lord Jesus. God sent his word. That word sent means it is already sent. The, the word is already here to heal you, to comfort you, to bless you. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them 
from their destructions, delivered them from their fears. Oh man. See, 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 understand time can be a friend or time can be an enemy. It depends upon how you choose to use it. I'm gonna say it again. Time can be a friend or time can be your enemy. It depends upon how you choose to use it. See, because time is like a river. It's like a river. You cannot touch the same water twice because the flow, or because of the flow of the river. Are you hearing me? Once it has passed, that flow of river, that water has passed, guess what? It will never, you will never be able to, let's just say, to, to, to touch that same water again. Why? Because the river is constantly flowing and time is constantly flowing. Are you hearing me? The only way you can step back into your yesterday is in your mind, your memories. Thank God for a good memory. Thank God you're still in your right mind. Are you hearing me? And this is why you want to sow to those things that are good. This is why you want to be able to enjoy every moment of your life. Are you hearing me? Enjoy every moment of your life. And we know every moment is not going to feel good. Every moment is not going to sound good. Every moment is not going to be good. But guess what? I, I, I'm thankful today that I can say my good days outweigh my bad days. Thank you, Jesus. Saints, we're not living in a perfect world. Understand, you weren't given a perfect body our bodies are going to break down just like these machines and just like these things that we're dealing with, our cars, our, you know, something happens in the house, the home, the apartment, you got to do plumbing, you got to do electrical, the lights went out, the this, the that, whatever, something, there's always something more to do. Why? Because you're not living in a perfect world and you are not in a perfect body. So there's going to come time, there's going to be times when you're going to have to be able to address those issues that are taking place even in your body. And this is why you want to be able to think about what you're thinking about. It's why you want to be able to utilize your tongue to speak life. So, so what are you doing to make not just your, your life better, but what are you doing to make someone else's life better? Or are you just concerned about yourself? Are you selfish? See, because selfish people can never really be happy. Understand that now. When you're selfish, you're not. You're, you're never going to really be happy. You might be trying to make yourself happy, but mm -mm. selfishness, man. Ooh, Lord Jesus, that's a big negative. Why? Because your flesh can never be satisfied. Your flesh can never be satisfied. See, and what's in your flesh will eventually come up out of your mouth. Whatever God says you can have, whatever God says you can have, you should want all of it. I want all of what God says I can have. See, and you and 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 what's really you know whew, messed up is the fact that your mouth can keep you from getting it. See, see, God wants to do this. God wants to do that. God promised you. And then you're wondering why the promise is not coming true or coming to pass. Why? Because of the mere fact, not only are you doubting God, but you're speaking words that would dismantle the, the promises of God. Now, the promise is still there, but I'm talking about cause and effect, cause and effect. See, when you release those negative words, you're going to bring forth a negative effect. See, but you can improve and make progress when you address your attitude. See, you have to be able to address your attitude. And then you're going to have to be able to use some self-control. And I've made mention of the fact of the importance of discipline. Being able to restrain yourself. Are you hearing me? You have to be able to restrain yourself. See, there's some people in our lives that will cause you, cause us to kind of like fly off the handle. Man, well, and I, you don't want to lose restraint. You want to be disciplined. You want to demonstrate some self-control. 
You want to be able to have mastery over your body. You want to be able to have mastery over your mouth, over the words that you speak. And you want to make sure you're doing it out of a good attitude because your attitude will determine your altitude, how high you will go in God and how good you will be blessed. Are you hearing me? Because James 1 and 26 says this, if anyone among you thinks he or she is religious and does not bridle their tongue, they deceive their own heart. This man or woman's religion is useless. Are you hearing me today? See, to thy own self be true. My God, my God. To thy own self be true. Look what he says in the 27th verse now. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. In other words, clean, oh my God. And it's going to take some self-control and some discipline in order to make that happen. Oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, God is speaking to somebody. He's speaking to you today. He wants you to know there's power in the words that you speak, Lord Jesus. So what area of your life do you need to work on? Number one, are you putting yourself down? Mm -hmm. Are you putting yourself down? Do you have, let me, let me, let me put it like this. Do you have a potty mouth? My mama used to call it a potty mouth. Stop cursing. Don't use those words. Do you have a potty mouth? Are, are, are you speaking the language of the world and not the language of God? Are, are, are you using the Lord's name in vain? Oh, Lord Jesus. My God, you don't want to use the Lord's name in vain. Isn't it amazing how some people want to release the power of God through prayer when they are around Certain people, I'm talking about church folk, you know, we get around them people in the church and yeah, I, I want to release the power of God. I want to speak those things that sound good to the church. But when they're not in church, mm, 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 mm. when they're not in church, when they're not around those church folk, they misrepresent God because they say they love. Mm, mm. They say they love the Lord. They say they love, you know, the people of God and so on and so forth. But the real deal is, look at the message, the message that now being spoken out of their mouths. You don't want to be a hypocrite, saints. You don't want to be a hypocrite because your words have power. Your words have power. See, God wants you to live a good life. He wants you to live a good life. And when you're confronted with life's problems, cares, and worries, remember, God is faithful. God is faithful. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. So God is wanting you, God wants you to know he's not just going to bless you. He's going to bless your seed. And if he can bless your seed, he will bless your seed seed. Thank you, Jesus. God is faithful to his word. See, and you have to be able to, 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 to treasure that word and hide that word of God in your heart. See why? Because your words have the power, have power. Your words will strengthen you or, or weaken you, as I told you earlier. You want to be able to strengthen yourself by using those words that will enrich and that will empower you and will enable you to keep moving forward, will enable you to, to, to grow. And I'm talking about to grow in Christ. You have to decide how you're going to use those words of God. Are you hearing me? I declare and decree my broke days are over. That's it. See, 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 you, you have, I, I declare and decree, I am healed by the blood. I declare and decree, I will succeed and not fail. I declare and decree, I am somebody because God didn't make no jump when he made me, when he made you. And my brother and sister, know that the best is still yet to come. And this is your day to be blessed. 
So understand the power of the tongue. Understand the words that you speak. The words that you will speak will either brighten your day or it will put a damper on your day and it will eventually take you to a dark place. God wants you to be blessed. We here at CWM, Scripture Meditation and Prayer Line, we want you to be blessed. Man, who our pastors want you to be blessed. Your pastor wants you to be blessed. Your mama wants you to be blessed. Your dad wants you to be blessed. To tell you the truth, even your good friends, listen to me now, your good friends want you to be friend, want you to be blessed. It's very important that you pay attention to the power of the tongue and to the words that you're speaking. Let go of words of doubt. The Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. You have to know that you know. I mean, I you have to know that you know that you know that the words that you speak is going to release life. Man, and where there's life, let me say this, there's life. I'm going to say it again. Where there is life, there is light. And the Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. In his presence is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I got a testimony. Every one of you, whether you're on, on the prayer line this morning or viewing this on social media, on the YouTube channel, guess what? You have the light of Jesus in you. Ooh, Lord Jesus. And if you have the light of Jesus in you, that means you should be speaking some good things. Uh, I'm not here to say you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's. I'm not saying, you know, your money's like you want it to be. I'm not here to say your relationship is how it should be. But the real deal is you want to make sure your relationship with Jesus. You want to make sure you have a relationship with God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And you want to be able to say, I'm being led and guided by his Holy Spirit. And I'm thanking God every day for his word. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I thank God for the privilege of being able to talk with him. It's a privilege. You know, those of you who have a car and a license, it's a privilege to be able to drive. It's a privilege to be able to, to do many of the things that we're doing today, but to talk to the, to the God of more than enough, to be able to talk to, 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 to I'm talking about a superfluous God, I'm, I'm talking about a, 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 a God that cannot be matched, a God who, who stands alone, I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to be able to talk with him, how can you not? Mm, mm, mm. want to spend time with God. If Look at it, look at it. You didn't spend some time with him on this, on YouTube. You didn't spend some time with him, you know, on the prayer line this morning. And guess what? When you can get into that quiet place, that those times when nobody's around, when it's just you and him, when you can release those words, Lord God, in spite of what I'm going through, I want to say thank you. God, I want to thank you for being forever faithful. See, we have to be able to, 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 to talk right, pray right, speak right. And you know what my mama told me a long time ago? She's gone now, but she said, son, if you know how to pray, you know how to preach. I, I didn't think nothing of it back then, but, but I, I, I began to, to realize now what mama told me. See, it's so good. You want to be a praying mama. You want to be a, 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 a virtuous mother, a virtuous dad. You want to be that someone who is not just plugged in, but locked into Jesus. Uh, ooh, I, I just love this. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And I'm, I'm so glad for you. I'm glad for you because you can't be stopped. You can't be stopped. What the devil meant for evil God is going to turn it into a greater good. Continue to speak life over yourself. You will succeed and not fail. Are you hearing me today? Oh, praise God. Dear God, dear Father, we just want to say thank you. 
I thank you first and foremost for the leading of your spirit. I thank you for these amazing men and women you've assembled to the line today. I thank you for the love you have for each and every one of us. And Father God, right now, Lord God, I pray, Father God, over, oh God, I pray over these YouTubers, Lord God. I pray, Father God, over those who are viewing this on social media. And I pray that you will meet their needs and that you will grant the desires of their heart. And I pray, Father God, that you will organize their thoughts so that they will be able to speak those words that will bring life into their lives, into the lives of their loved ones. And Lord God, thank you for the privilege of being able to have a little talk with you. And I ask this prayer over my social media site right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've heard something today that have blessed you, please give me a thumbs up. I would I would say uh, hit that notification bell. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. And then I would ask that you, if you will do me the favor and the honor of sharing this message with someone that need to hear a word about their tongue. Praise God. I love you now. Have a great day. In Jesus' name, amen.